So welcome to TechnoDad Life, and my name is Jeff. And so let's go into why your next PC and server will probably be ARM-based. And I'm not just talking about the Raspberry Pi. So currently, x86-based servers are 91% of the market and almost 100% of the PC sales market. ARM has taken over the lower end of the consumer devices such as phones. The phones nowadays can cost more than a PC. And ARM is also taking over lower end uh, enterprise devices. Currently, ARM chips uh, cost about 25% of uh, the cost of an x86 chip and they use 25% of the power for the same performance. ARM has also now overtaken Intel for performance and we'll talk about more th about that later. First, what is ARM? That is really a two-part answer, so we'll need to talk about the instruction set and the chip design. For the instruction set, we need to talk about RISC versus CISC. So CISC approach, or complex instruction set computers, the primary goal of CIS architecture is to complete a task in as few lines of assembly code as possible. This is achieved by building processor hardware that is capable of understanding and executing a series of operations. Now the RISC approach, or a reduced instruction set computer, so RISC processors only use simple instructions, which are highly optimized that can be executed with one, within one clock cycle. So in practice, this means that a RISC chip will need to use more cycles to accomplish a complex instruction than a CIS chip, but it can do those commands faster and with less energy. So x86 chips are one of the few CISC chips currently available. Most chips nowadays are RISC. So ARM, or Advanced RISC Machines, or originally Acorn RISC Machines after a British company, is a family of RISC architectures for computer processors. ARM licenses its designs to company that then can modify them for their situation. The volume of ARM-based processor currently shipped is 10 times greater than x86 processors. Mainly, this is due to cell phones. This fact has led to ARM processor manufacturer companies leading Intel by at least two generations. So currently, Apple uses five nanometer process production in 2020 whereas most x86 PC shipments are based on 10 or 14 nanometer. As a result, a benefit of the shrunk die is that ARM-based PCs use much lower power for the same performance, which allows them to either have more compute power, extended battery life, or no fans. Lastly, using ARM-based technologies, Mac computers make it possible to have all the iPhone and iPad applications run on Mac computers. The Apple M1 is the company's first system-on-a-chip design with Macs in mind. With four large performance cores, four efficiency cores, and an eight-core GPU, it features 16 billion transistors on a five nanometer process node. On paper, though, it looks like a souped-up A14 from an iPhone. In the past five years, Intel has managed to increase their best single-threaded performance by 28%. In that same time, Apple has managed to improve their designs by 198%. Apple is able to achieve this while also limiting total power consumption to 5 watts, and that's including the system on chip, the DRAM, and the regulators, versus Intel, which is 21 plus watts for 1185G7, and AMD, which is 49 watts for a 5950X, and that's for chip power only. This does not include DRAM or regulation power. This is absolutely mind-blowing. Currently, Apple uses Rosetta to run Intel-based Mac apps, and they run at normal speeds or better test show. Boot Camp is not currently available for the M1 Mac, so Windows is not officially supported, but a developer has shown that Windows for ARM can run on the new M1 Macs. Microsoft shares a similar objective to Apple. It wants to move its current PC platform to ARM-based processors because they offer better price performance, constant connectivity, and improved architectures. So in 2020, Microsoft introduced the Surface Pro X with the Microsoft SQ1 processor based on the Qualcomm Snapdragon XCX system-on-chip 
So currently, Microsoft ARM-based PCs can run 64-bit ARM apps, 32-bit ARM apps, or 32-bit x86 apps in emulation. So currently, 64-bit x86 apps don't work. So in early 2021, Microsoft is scheduled to release an x86 64-bit emulator. So Linus Torvald has said that in order for ARM to make it to the server space, they need to have development machines, i.e. PCs that can run ARM. And it looks like we're headed in that direction. In the server realm, Amper has announced a new 128-core ARM server as a follow-up to their 80-core Ultra. HPE, Supermicro, and Lenovo all have ARM processor servers now. A company called Bamboo System has a ground-up ARM system that contains eight Linux servers, each with a dedicated memory and storage in a 1U box that they say saves up to 50% of acquisition costs, 75% of the energy, and 80% of the rack space due to the density and form factor compared to a similar x86 system. Wow. Now let's not forget that the current top supercomputer in the world is the Fugaku Fujitsu in Kobe, Japan. And it uses ARM A64FX ships, and it is 2.8 times faster than the second fastest supercomputer currently. So how does this equate to right now? So I bought a MacBook Air, which is a completely fanless, silent laptop design. It is instant on, and I can edit video as well or better than my custom-built PC with a high-end graphics card. The MacBook Air costs less than my graphics card did when I purchased that new. So the downsides are that the Air is not upgradable. But the trade-off of it not being upgradable is worth it to me just to have a silent PC. So my desktop currently has five loud fans. Let me know in the comments if you plan on upgrading to an ARM PC. Also hit that like button if you found this helpful and make sure to subscribe and hit the bell button to be notified of new videos. Take care and have a great and day. And a special Bye -bye. thank you to all my patrons who without your support this channel would not be possible. And if you haven't already, please think about supporting the channel you love. Thank you.